Hi, I'm Jim from BOE Marine. Today we're going to learn how to cut a hole in a dash through fiberglass. Right here we have all the tools laid out that you're going to need. We try to keep these videos so that the do-it-yourselfer at home will know how to, how to do it with tools you might have in your garage. So uh, first of all, we'll start on this side of the table. You have all your measuring uh, tools here just simply so you can uh, center on the, get your hole centered. Uh, make sure you're mounting uh, your piece of equipment exactly where you want it to go. Um, we've got a variety of saws. First is a couple of jig saws. We have an oscillating saw. We have a little uh, air saw. And then we have uh, a drill. You're going to need a drill to uh, drill your pilot holes to get, the, to get started. And then over here we have uh, some grinders. Uh, you know, your hole might not be exactly right the first try, so you may need to make it a little wider in certain places to fit the unit. Um, all the manufacturers nowadays pretty much give you a flush mount template. Looks like this. And uh, they all vary in how you use them. Some of them you actually, like garments here, you just stick on the dash and you just cut along the line. Some of the other brands are on paper and you, versus being adhesive, this one's adhesive, so you actually peel it apart and stick it on your dash. But some of the other ones are paper, so you actually cut those out and then you stick that, that, uh, that cut out part on the dash and just follow along the edge of it. Um, of course, we'll also need tape to protect your dash. This is the popular blue tape that you always see around boats used for a variety of stuff when you're working on them. And uh, scissors to cut out your flush mount template if you need to. And a file in case you don't have any of this stuff. If you don't have any of the grinding things, then you might just need to, to file down the edges to make it a little bigger. To, fit that display. And then finally, we have a hole saw kit uh, to get the corner started. Some of the units have have real round corners on them and some have very squared off corners. When I'm talking about the corners, what I'm talking about are uh, the, the actual corner of the hole that you have to make. It's like Garmin here has a pretty small, a pretty small uh, hole that you can actually uh, duplicate with the you can duplicate it with a, a drill bit. So you'd, you'd make a drill, a drill hole in each corner to get that radius. Some of the other units have bigger rounded edges, so you might need to get a, a hole saw out, like one of these guys, and, and actually put a hole there in the corner with a hole saw. So depending on what brand you go with, you, you'll either need drill bits or, uh, or hole saws. And uh, that's about it. So when we get into, when we get up on the boat. We'll actually mask off the area and uh, we'll show you how to use these various hole saws and drills and, and uh, jig saws and so on and uh, we'll get that hole cut out. Here we are up in the boat. You can see we've uh, now mounted the template up here. We haven't bored you with all the details of how to get this lined up, but you can use common sense to, to measure it from both sides and top and bottom and so on to get this thing perfectly square. Uh, this one's going to go right in the middle here, centered on the steering wheel. This particular template's for a Lowrance HDS-10. It's a 10-inch display, and uh, they use they have the big rounded radiuses in the corners. So we need to use a hole saw. These radiuses, in fact, are so big that we're we, we're going to use our little reciprocating saw for uh, some of these corners. But we'll show you how to use the hole saw for at least one of them. Um, if you don't have a, a real small saw like we have, then you'll probably want to do a a hole in each corner, and then that's just going to leave you with the straight lines in between those holes. To remove this whole center section. We've uh, masked everything off. We use this blue tape again. You can put one or two layers around the whole dash here. That's going to protect the fiberglass. And uh, we've also masked off some other areas of the boat just to, to keep uh, fiberglass dust out of places where it can uh, get caught. Um, so in this next segment we're going to tear into this thing and start cutting some holes. Uh, one, one last thing before we do that, I'm sure if you've, uh, you're, you're looking at this on the internet, you probably uh, look at the internet a lot and are terrified to cut a hole in your dash, but it's really no big deal. Uh, if you can cut in wood or anything, it's, it's pretty much the same thing, so um, let's get going. Before you get too ambitious and start cutting away, make sure you take a quick look behind your dash and make sure you're not going to run into any wires back here. You can see on this boat, we actually are enlarging a hole so uh, there was already a unit mounted here but if you look all the way around it we're pretty much clear there's one thing right here 
we might need to worry about, so we'll take a look at that before we actually start cutting. First, we'll get a pile of hole going in uh, each of these corners. Okay, now our pilot holes are established, and we're gonna start uh, drilling with the hole saw. This uh, particular mount requires a two and three quarter inch hole saw, so we're gonna get going with that. Um, normally, we use a uh, vacuum in the back to collect all the dust as we go, but on camera, it's pretty much impossible to hear me talking over that, so we're just gonna do it without that. <laughs> Very graceful. All right, now our hole's established. So next we're gonna um, drill the other, actually in, the, in our case, we're going to use our small saw to go around these new radiuses, but if you don't have a small saw like us, you'll wanna pop out all four of these corners with the hole saw. What's that, Vance? Nothing. <laughs> okay, the three saws we're going to use today are all laid out right here. First is an oscillating saw. This was uh, a company called Fine came out of these years ago, but they're getting really popular now. It actually just vibrates and it's great for trimming up the edges and stuff and getting in hard to reach places. Uh, the second one that you probably don't have at home but you may is a uh, air saw and this has a real fine blade it actually go around corners really well so we use this in really really tight spots it, it requires no clearance at all it'll, it'll fit in anywhere. And then third is a jigsaw this is generally what you can use everybody has one of these if you don't they're 50 bucks at the hardware store, 100 bucks. Um, this will take care of 99% of whatever fiberglass you're going to need to cut out in your dash. Um, you see we use a fine tooth blade on here. The fine tooth blade actually uh, is one way to prevent the fiberglass from chipping. Um, so you want to make sure you use a fine tooth blade. Uh, and when you're using these, or, or any saw on your dash, you want to make sure you put a lot of pressure on it. The worst thing that can happen is these blades biting in and the saw jumping back. And then that creates a real big mess. You'll probably scratch up your dash or even worse. So you want to make sure you're always pushing down really, really hard on the dash. And then you also just want to let the blade sort of make its way through. You don't want to push too hard because it will get hot. If you look over here at our dash, this particular dash, as well as pretty most boat dashes, is actually cord. So you see some wood in there. This thing's almost probably an inch thick or so. Um, it's very hard to cut through and because of the fiberglass it actually gets very hot so you don't want to go too fast. Um, a lot of people talk about using roto zips. We don't really use roto zips here, don't really have much uh, luck with them. Sometimes if there's a really hard to reach spot we'll use a roto zip but um, a roto zip is very hard to keep a straight line with. A jigsaw because of the straight blade or any of these saws we're talking about here because of the straight blade on it you can just run right along the line very easily, but a roto zip tends to wander back and forth, and they also get really hot, and it's just really hard to do. If you have a, a dash that's straight fiberglass with no coring in the middle, then a roto zip would possibly work pretty well in that. But a, a thick dash like this, a, a typical boat dash, we just don't have much luck with them, but a lot of people do. Um, so with that said, we're going to go ahead and start cutting some holes, or cutting the hole, the big hole out. <laughs> 